Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. If you have tried to use Fusion 360 and are still struggling after watching a bunch of videos or reading a lot of books, you are not alone. I was there too. This is the first video in my new Fusion 360 CAD tutorial series. As this is a series for complete beginners, you don't need any Fusion 360 or any other 3D modeling experience, and I will try to make it as simple as possible. Let's get started. A couple days ago, my mom wasn't home, so my dad had to make dinner for us. We had one of his chef specials, which is frozen pizza. But when he tried to preheat the oven, he broke the knob. So, I'm going to show you how to design one with Fusion 360 and 3D print it. Using Fusion 360 for designing something is actually pretty similar to 3D printing. When we start printing a 3D model, it will start with the first layer. In Fusion 360, we will draw a 2D sketch similar to the first layer of a 3D model, and then we tell Fusion 360 how tall it should be. This process is called extrude. If I just want to make a simple replacement for the knob, I can design a knob like the one on the Ender 3 in just a few quick steps. I will show you how to make a simple knob and understand some basic concepts in Fusion 360. Then we will make something a little more complex like the original knob in the next video. No matter what you make, the first step is to get some measurements. First, I will measure the diameter of this knob. It's about 27 millimeters, and the height is about 25 millimeters. The diameter of the shaft is 6.5 millimeters, and just like the shaft on a stepper motor, it has a flat surface. The height of the flat surface is around 5.5 millimeters, and the length of the shaft is about 12 millimeters. Okay, now that we have some basic measurements, I will take this to the computer. First, for the Ender 3 style knob, I can just draw a circle and extrude it. Click Create Sketch, and then we need to select which plane we want to draw this sketch on. As you can see, we have the X, Y, and Z planes. In this case, I will just select the bottom plane. There are already some commonly used shapes for you to choose from. I won't go over them one by one, so we will just focus on what we need to make for this model. Select the circle, which is the center diameter circle. We can start at the origin. Type in the size, which is 27 millimeters. In this step, we will draw the 2D sketch, and it doesn't matter how tall the model is. Next, we will draw another circle for the shaft, and it's 6.5 millimeters. Let's use the wheel on the mouse to zoom in a little closer. Draw another circle and enter 6.5. I also want to draw a line here to represent the flat area for the shaft. Select line and draw a line around here. As I want the distance between this line and the top of the circle to be 5.5 millimeters, I will draw another line on the top. Since this line is just for reference, we don't want it to actually do anything in our 3D model. Click on it and select Line Type. This is a construction line. Just like how you cut a piece of wood, you may want to draw some lines to find the center, or to just be there as some sort of reference. The line has now changed to a dotted line. Press the D button on the keyboard, click the baseline and the construction line, and enter 5.5. So we get exactly 5.5 millimeters from the top of the circle. As you can see, the circle is black and our baseline is blue. The difference between black and blue is that black is fully constrained. That means we have entered sufficient information. As we started the center diameter from the origin and the diameter is 6.5 millimeters, there is no way that we can move it to another location and still meet these two standards. So it can't be moved and it turns black. We want all our sketches to be fully constrained so we won't accidentally drag it to another position that we don't want. 
For example, if I drag this construction line to here by mistake, the baseline is no longer at the position we wanted. We can press Ctrl Z to undo this. Instead, we can set the relation of this construction line tangent to the circle by pressing the Control button or the Command button for a Mac, clicking on the line and clicking the circle. Select them and select the Tangent button. Now you can see everything in this sketch is fully constrained. OK, we already put every number we need for this sketch. We will put the length for the knob and the shaft in the next step, as their lengths have nothing to do with the sketch. We can then click Finish Sketch. Let's use the wheel of the mouse to zoom out a little bit. Besides zooming in and out, the wheel of your mouse has another important function in Fusion 360. When you press it down and move the cursor, it works like a pan tool. Release it and hold down the Shift button on the keyboard. Press down on the wheel and move the mouse again. It will adjust the angle of your view. Now, we can extrude the sketch to make our knob. Press the E key on the keyboard and select the part we want to extrude. You can extrude it in both directions, but let's extrude it upwards. If you click on the same part again, it will cancel the selection. If you use your mouse to select everything, it will extrude the entire sketch. Let's extrude the entire sketch and enter 25 millimeters. We still need to make a hole at the bottom to fit the shaft. The sketch has now disappeared. After you extrude a sketch the first time, Fusion 360 will hide it by default. We can go to the browser on the left, and under Sketches, select the eye and show Sketch 1. Now, we can hold down on the Shift key and the mouse wheel to change the viewing angle from the bottom. Press E again, and we can select the circle without the flat part and enter 15 millimeters. If we extrude it upwards, it will cut out the existing body. If we drag it down, it will extrude a shaft to the bottom. Let's just drag it back to the top and set it to 15 millimeters. Since this is not the first time we are extruding this sketch, Fusion will not hide the sketch automatically, as it thinks we may still want to see it. Finally, I would like to add an indicator on the surface like this white line on the Ender 3 knob. We can do that by drawing a new sketch on the surface. Select Create Sketch, and this time instead of selecting an X, Y, or Z plane, we will select the surface of the knob. We will draw something called a slot. Select Create, select Slot, and we will use the first one, Center to Center Slot. Let's say I want the slot to go from here to here. The width is 2 millimeters. OK, we can just extrude it to make the slot. However, we can still move this slot around. In order to develop a good habit, we should enter some relations between this slot and other components so the color will turn from blue to black, as we always want to make a fully constrained sketch. We can draw a construction line from the origin, which is the center of the circle. We want a straight line all the way down to the edge of the circle, so change it to a construction line. Select this construction line and hold the Control key or Command key for a Mac, and then set their relation to collinear. Now you can see the sides of this slot are constrained, but we still need to set the distance of the starting and ending point of this slot. If I wanted to set the distance from the first point to the origin, I can use the keyboard shortcut D, which stands for distance. Select these two points, enter 7 millimeters. Select these two points and enter 12 millimeters. The entire sketch is now fully constrained, and we can't move anything using the mouse. If we want to change anything, we need to change the numbers like this, or remove the relation between the shapes in order to move them around. We can now press Finish Sketch and extrude the slot. Use the keyboard shortcut E to do so. This time, we will extrude the slot downwards and it will cut a slot on the surface like this. Let's extrude it 2 millimeters. We can drag it down or put negative 2 millimeters so it will make a 2 millimeter deep slot on the surface. 
Okay, we are done with the design and it looks pretty good. Save the file and give it a name. Then we can export this to a STL file and 3D print it. Go to the browser and click on body. There's only one body in our drawing, which is called body one. Right click and select save as mesh. A menu will pop up and select format. Since we normally use STL for 3D printing, select STL binary and enter a file name. Then we can open our slicer and drag in this STL file. I will use the default setting to print this simple knob. Okay, let's find out if it fits. It does fit, but the shape looks weird. If you are new to Fusion 360, I don't want to put too many things in one video. So I will show you how to make a knob that looks the exact same as the original one in the next tutorial when we start using the loft tool. Let's summarize what we've learned in this video. A new design in Fusion 360 starts with a sketch, just like the first layer of a 3D model. We draw a 2D sketch and tell Fusion how tall we want it to be, which is called extruding. If we want to extrude a sketch to an existing object, it will cut the object. Most of the time, we want our sketch to be fully constrained by entering in dimensions and setting the relation between the shapes inside the sketch. This doesn't mean that you can't work without a fully constrained sketch, but it's a good habit to have. If you want to make sure you understand and remember the things we have learned in this video, you can go to your computer, download Fusion 360, and do the same exercise to make a knob. I started this channel with my brother back in February of 2021. We started with 3D printing, where we do 3D printer assembly, reviews, and upgrades. Recently, I've begun to expand and cover more topics relating to tech, like some of my videos on CNC machining and this very first Fusion 360 video of my channel. I hope you enjoyed. I recently opened a new Twitter account for this channel. I will post update notifications for my videos, and most importantly, as I'm always hunting for good deals on tech-related stuff, if I find big discounts from sites like Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, or other sources, I'll post right away to let everyone know, so you won't miss any amazing deals. You can go check it out and follow the account if you're interested. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.